Um, the Menil Collection is a 30-acre campus uh, within downtown Houston, sort of within a residential neighborhood. And just very quickly to tell you, again, for those of you who may not have gone, it consists of five art buildings. The main building, which is the first standalone museum designed in America by Renzo Piano and has been much emulated since then. It has a collection that is not encyclopedic, but strengths include arts of Africa, the Pacific Islands, Byzantine icons, surrealist art, uh, and modern and contemporary. We, are in the, we have just finished a complete remodeling uh, renovation of the first floor of the museum, staying very true to its roots, but reinstalled the collection so that the permanent collection now will be constantly rotating. And it was an opportunity for us to bring out works of art that have never been on view before, um, and some of them you see here in this slide. Among the innovations of the Menil collection is the attention to natural light and how Renzo Piano designed what he called these leaves to modulate light. Uh, as, it, as the clouds move across the sky, you get a sense of that within the building. Also on the campus is a former uh, supermarket that has been changed by Dan Flavin into an amazing installation and it was the last project, well one of the last projects he worked on before he passed away. Cy Twombly Gallery, also designed by Renzo Piano. Uh, the Byzantine Fresco Chapel, which is now a space used for contemporary art, but was designed to house Byzantine uh, fresco that the Dominials saved and rescued. And now, of course, the point of being here today is to talk about the new Menil Drawing Institute. You see, for those of you here, this arrow in the slide points to it. It's located in the center of our neighborhood of art. And if you were looking at it, there is a, a Kelly sculpture, again, another artist, one of his very last public commissions uh, that's at the entrance to the museum. Uh, and if you look at the museum, if you stand to the south of it, you can see in the distance the main building, Renzo Piano's building, and then to the side, the Twombly building, and then on the far left is our energy house. Dominique Dominiel did not like to hear the hum of generators uh, and heaters, and so all of that is off-site. So you can see for us, the Menil Drawing Institute is situated very much in the middle of our campus, which speaks to the primacy of drawings. This idea that one needs to get up close to these works of art, that they are sort of the beginning of everything in many ways. And we wanted to provide people with an opportunity to have a space that is devoted entirely to drawing. So uh, you can see another view of the entrance to the museum. On the north side of it, there is a glass wall. This is a building that was designed by two young architects based in Los Angeles, Johnston Mark Lee, Sharon Johnston and Mark Lee. This glass corner from the inside you see has an ottoman where people can sit and really see everything that's going on in our neighborhood. As you enter, and what this picture shows is someone standing in the main space looking back out towards the front door. This is the space where we have lectures, where we have dinners and receptions for the, um, any exhibition that's taking place. Everything about the way that this building is designed modulates light. So the steel canopy outside, as you walk underneath it, it becomes less bright. Then you walk inside to this main room, less bright again, so that when you turn into the room where we have our drawings exhibitions and you see the door is closed here on the left, um, your eyes are accustomed. You don't even realize that this process is happening, but you're ready to see these works on paper. We opened with an exhibition of drawings by Jasper Johns. The Menil Drawing Institute had existed for 10 years, so long before the physical building took place. And as its first major act of scholarship, the Menil Drawing Institute published the catalog resume of Jasper Johns' drawings. So to launch and open the building, we had this show of drawings all of which are owned by the Menil Collection or a promise gifts um, and then augmented by a few loans from the artist himself. Uh, currently, we have on view part one of a two-part Ronnie Horn exhibition, and you can see that the space is very flexible. We can take out these walls and change it as we need to. 
But the Drawing Institute is not just a public exhibition space. It really has several functions. Exhibition is one of them. Study and scholarship is another very important part. Acquisition, conservation, and the storage of modern and contemporary drawings. These are all uh, part of the, the importance and the duty of this building. So to go back into this hall, um, or this main room, you see there's a wall in the foreground on the right. This will be the site of an annual drawings commission. And the first was by Ronnie Horn. You see her here installing um, a piece, sort of aphorisms that were applied by silkscreen on the wall. The Drawing Institute, the architecture of that building is arranged around three courtyards. Uh, to the west, you have the entry courtyard. They all have their own distinct themes. On the right, there is a, a different courtyard, more tropical, with a single huge live oak tree in it. Um, and all of these trees will be growing up, so you see them poking above the architecture of the building. The Menil Collection is set within a residential neighborhood, and we want the architecture to be feel larger on the inside than it is on the outside, and as these trees grow, they create that feeling of almost homes within the art. Uh, excuse me, within the neighborhood. I should say that the Dumanils believe that art is an essential part of the human condition, that everyone needs to live with art, and that there should be no boundaries to it. So entrance to all of our art buildings, public programs, and green spaces is free to the public. So this idea of living with art whether you have one dollar in your wallet or a million dollars, it's beside the point. You come in, these are your homes, these are places where you can experience uh, the works on view. So we have these two public courtyards and then we have one that's semi-private. This one is in the back. It's known as our scholars courtyard and the curatorial offices and the fellows offices surround it. They're the most beautiful offices I've ever seen and much nicer than mine, I must say. Um, as you walk from that scholar's courtyard, you go into what's known as the drawing room. This is where we teach. This is where we hold seminars and classes. We can fit about 20 chairs around this large table. And all around the room uh, is built out so we can pull in, push, push in, pull out all sorts of uh, places where we can put drawings to talk about them to university classes, to scholars who come to visit. Uh, it's an amazing space. Off of this room, we have smaller seminar rooms and also a salon area. So we have different configurations for all of our visitors. There is a conservation lab specifically for works on paper, um, which is an amazing, you know, oftentimes when you, one works in large museums, as I have, to get from drawing storage to paper conservation means traversing an, the length of a museum, and here it's just around the corner. And then downstairs, state-of-the-art storage with some of the largest flat files, I think, uh, possible to acquire. And the tables double as a way of checking a rolled drawings, and here uh, our conservator, our paper conservator, is looking at a large John K watercolor and smoke drawing. Uh, and then now the same table is being used to color correct drawings by Cy Twombly for a book on Treatise on the Veil. One of the amazing things that we were able to accomplish down here in storage is have a 70-foot rail so that we can bring out drawings, scholars can look at them, juxtapose them, get a sense of what they might want to put on view upstairs, allow visitors to come and look at things um, without, I don't know, at a former institution with which I was associated, uh, the drawings curators had to wait until after public hours and lay things out on the floor to get that kind of expanse. So to us, it feels incredibly luxurious. Um, and I would just like to say that this wouldn't be possible without the support and the vision of some of our greatest benefactors and philanthropists, uh, Louisa Studi Seraphim, who is an important collector of drawings um, and has been such an amazing leader of the Menil collection. She was appointed by Dominique de Menil to follow in her stead. And then to her right, Janie C. Lee, who is, uh, was a dealer of drawings and then was a curator of drawings at the Whitney. You may remember her Gorky show um, and is also now a trustee at the Menil Collection. And it was really their shared vision 
uh, in conversations early on with Dominique de Menil, but then with so many others who made this vision of the Menil Drawing Institute become a reality. And if you haven't visited Houston, I encourage you to do so. It's really a special place, and for those of you who love drawings, will be even more so. Thank you so much. Um, could you share with us um, a few of the highlights of the, of the, of the collection itself and, and some of your personal favorites? I know we're not going to be able to see them, uh -huh. but what, what really excites you in, in the collection itself of works on paper? That is always such a tricky question because it's like choosing your favorite child, child right? So yeah. you've, you've made someone very happy and really annoyed another person. So, um, you know, I think one of the great things about the drawing collection, which now is, is just over 3,000 drawings and is growing daily, uh, is, is its breadth and its strength, um, mostly modern and contemporary, but have some older drawings. And that is a place where I think we will expand to try to give some of the breadth. Uh, like the manual collection, the drawing collection is not encyclopedic. We have a limited acquisition budget and therefore we really are working on creating that strategic plan that we need in order to make smart acquisitions. Uh, but sometimes where it goes deep, it goes very deep. So uh, Ellsworth Kelly, we have an amazing collection of his archives, which he later collaged together into sheets of photographs and drawings, recently acquired more than 500 early works from Walter de Maria. Mm -hmm. None of them have ever, ever been reproduced before. Um, and we're working on a show of his work. Um, when we opened the Drawing Institute, we made sure to hang in both the, the private and the public spaces more than 50% women and artists of color to show the diversity there. Recently acquired a very important early drawing by Glenn Ligon. Um, so there is, there is a wide range of work uh, to be seen and it speaks also the collection to the Domineal's interest in spirituality and I would like to distinguish, I don't mean religion here, but this idea that art has the power to transport one to another place. Interested also in the Domineal's championing of civil rights and so the Menil collection has a very strong presence in collecting works by African-American artists as well. So you will see all of those interests echoed uh, in the drawing collection. And of course, Jasper Johns, as our, the first artist whose work we recognized, we have a very, very important collection of Johns drawings. Great, thank you. And in terms of ex the exhibition program over the next period? Are there highlights coming that we should pay attention to? Okay, this is where I will trip up as to what has been announced versus what hasn't. But, I think um, you're safe here. <laughs> uh, we're about to open the second part of the Ronnie Horn exhibition, so that opens in early June. Uh, that will be followed by Le Cure. Uh, so there is a show at the Petit Palais. We're taking a version of it, and our version is very similar to what will then go to the Morgan Museum and Library in New York. Um, and then after that, we have Bryce Martin, a really beautiful show working with the artist, drawing also um, heavily from his collection. Um, but we're programmed out for the next few years, so it'll be That's an exciting, exciting. time. Yeah. And we're really trying to show some artists whom one might expect and then things that are great surprises. Sometimes they'll coordinate with what's on view in the main museum, the larger museum building, and other times they won't. And I should say, um, just because we have a drawing institute now does not mean we are not showing works on paper and drawings in the main museum. We always do. Um, and so sometimes those, were, those are coordinated and sometimes they aren't. But this is also very much of a, a teaching institute, a study institute. So you, you will know soon that there will be fellowship programs that are being offered for the Drawing Institute. And while we might not have as much money um, to offer as these fellowships to be the most competitive, what I have done is commandeered one of our bungalows because we have about a hundred little small historic homes around us and we've uh, completely renovated it so that our fellows will be able to come with just a duffel bag of clothes that will be fully furnished and literally they'll be able to roll out of bed into the Drawing Institute, into the main building, and really I hope have one of the most remarkable experiences of their lives during their time living with us. That sounds 
very exciting, I have to say. Thank you so much.